Hey everyone, welcome to a bonus episode of The Dark Parade. My name is Bo, and I'm a found footage fool. Tell me the camera thing isn't annoying. Yeah, it's annoying. Hey everybody, uh, so we are doing another found footage fool uh, this month, largely just due to scheduling issues on my end and you know, usual stuff with work and all that routine. Um, but I'm hoping that this will be a little bit interesting. Uh, last time we did one of these, uh, we talked about like Sorbi, Sorgoy Prokov, I think was the name of it. Uh, at any rate, just kind of some more obscure, interesting sort of found footage stuff. Uh, after doing, you know, all the paranormal activity movies, trying to do something a little more off the beaten path. And I think this falls into that category as well. And I'm also stretching the bounds of what we consider, you know, part of the show. Because originally this was uh, all about movies, right? And this is still a movie, kind of. But it is also a, uh, a, a, a web series, a YouTube series. It, it's credited as a TV show on IMDb, but I think that might be overstating it. But this kind of came to my attention, you know, uh, just because of a good old fashioned Google alert about found footage movies and uh, somebody, uh, it was Dread Central or, you know, one of those uh, outlets that said like, hey, this is actually one of the better found footage things uh, to have come out in a while. And in, and it's done by um, a guy uh, who, who ought to know a thing or two. Uh, about, you know, this sort of thing. Uh, a guy named Zachary Donahue who wrote and uh, I think directed as well The Den, which is, uh, you know, the movie all about like this secret chat room where uh, people uh, are murdered. And it's a, a found footage movie I keep meaning to go back to because it's been a while since I've seen it. I remember not being blown away by it, but I, I kind of want to revisit it. And The Unknowable also stretches not only our definition of movies and what we cover on this show, but whether or not it's... I mean, it's a real thing in that, that it, it, it exists, but much like uh, if you heard the conversation I had with Jamie recently about... Um, cocaine bear and grizzly too in particular on the heels of cocaine bear about how that movie uh, used b-roll and stock footage in a way that you know completely undercut the the movie and the unknowable from uh, writer director Zachary Donahue 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 um is kind of in it, it's not completely undercut by it but it also begs the question how much of the footage has to be yours before it it's just b-roll and stock footage and not a real thing even though there are honest to goodness actors in this um you know the but a lot of that s stuff is not quite still photography but a lot of static images and a lot of that stuff is reused. Not all of it. Some of it is legit. But, um, you know, I just want to warn you before going into this. Especially, I feel like, in the later uh, episodes. Because there are nine episodes total. And the whole thing probably runs, mm, you know, 30 to 40 minutes-ish. But... But the in the later episodes in particular, there's a lot of like, you know, uh, movies that are in the public domain that are used, uh, you know, characters that are kind of created whole cloth from footage that you could get from somewhere else. And most of the time that mostly works. And, and but sometimes it, it's quite distracting. But what the unknowable is, it, it's a. Uh, a mockumentary, if you will, a, a faux documentary in which the narrator is telling the story of this family that went out into the middle of nowhere, into the desert, uh, to create this, uh, you know, lighthouse out in the desert. 
and he starts uh, having visions. Like originally they're in San Francisco and he starts having visions of, I think they're called the Aridin, um, that there are these like cosmic creatures and he's trying to make contact with them. And um, so it's him, his wife, his wife's sister, who is uh, who has never said a word. And, uh, you know, he tries this experiment. And when the experiment is kind of a success, it also opens uh, a gateway very briefly, both in the desert and also in New York, I think it is where a disturbed individual who later becomes a killer known as the clown with no makeup, um, you know, is, is given a glimpse at these cosmic horrors beyond and begins this journey across the country where he kind of murders his way uh, towards the Wilcox uh, farm. And, you know, there's other stuff about uh, this, you know, spirit journey that Thaddeus Wilcox goes on and, he ultimately ends up in a pool filled with LSD and has a, a crazy trip. And, you know, there's alien parasites in birds and just all kinds of weird shit. But these are broken up into these, you know, two to ten minute, closer to two. Most of the time it's closer to two to four. But occasionally they'll creep into the, like, eight, nine minute mark. And it's telling this story of you know this family and and the horrible fate that befell him it's very yeah at the risk of just sounding completely pat uh very lovecraftian in the sense that you're dealing with this family that is suffering all these trials and tribulations um there there's some interesting stuff that i really like about you know time and there's this other kind of caretaker slash witch named Agatha who's trying to use the body of the sister that doesn't talk as a vessel for her and that comes back into play later and that that kind of stuff I, I think is interesting but you know again if you want to see something that's a little off the beaten path even though it uses a lot of public domain stuff and, and found footage stuff uh, not found footage stuff but uh, uh, b-roll like public domain and, and stock footage stuff um the unknowable is interesting. So, you know, this isn't just merely an exercise in, you know, a subjective opinion, as regular listeners of Found Footage Fool know. Um, it is instead a very scientific look at, uh, at what is up here. And uh, so let's talk about, you know, the unknowable in terms of our five criteria. So criteria number one is keeping the camera on. Is there a good reason for that? And this isn't exactly found footage. This is more of a mockumentary, uh, which I still, you know, sort of wrap into the found footage full episodes. But yeah, the, uh, keeping the camera on makes sense in this movie um, where that is used. Most of the time, it does feel like it is, you know, kind of old timey footage of this family. Um, where that gets distracting, as I mentioned earlier, is when you're talking about, you know, th this public domain movie stuff and a couple of the movies, I'm like, I think I've seen this on mystery science theater and you're just using pieces of this to, you know, tell this kind of wackadoodle story about a guy who was a survivor of this circus massacre, but was blamed for it because he had a mutant face. And it wasn't really a mutant, but how did anyone know that? Um, so, you know, this applies, this criteria in particular applies less in this movie than in a lot of the movies we talk about. But I, I, I'm only bothered so much by this public domain usage. Because there's part of me that really admires it, that thinks it's really clever, that a guy basically got some friends of his together, shot some, you know standard stuff with them uh threw some grain on it and and drained it of, of color and then used a lot of this you know public domain stuff to help tell this story um that he had in mind and you know that's the thing i i really want to ask him is did the idea come before the footage or were you watching the footage and we're like hey i think i can make a movie out of this and at the end of the day it kind of doesn't matter 
what the origin was, but I am curious about that. Like, you know, what what came first, the the chicken or the public domain movie? Um, but I, I do find that interesting. Anyway, so enough about that. Then let's get to characters. And because this is a mockumentary and it's told in this very clipped fashion to mirror the fact that this is, you know, like a, a story set in the 40s and 50s, I think. Um, and it's edited within an inch of its life in terms of the audio so that it comes really quick. In fact, when I was watching it, it made me think a lot of Pick Six movies editing where there are no breaths or anything like that. It is just, you know, this constant hammering of conversation. And it feels very, you know, 40s. Like, yeah, listen, see, you know, these people moved out to the middle of the desert. And guess what happened? Well, cosmic creatures, that's what. And that kind of feeling to it. And part of me really likes that. It, it definitely creates a sense of momentum and propulsion through the story. But also, I would just like it a little more if, if each segment were a little longer um, but at any rate that's that has nothing to do with the characters other than to say it feels like we're kind of skimming over the top of this much deeper story that's going on and the characters are kind of interesting though the the one in particular I like is that character of Agatha who appears to be using this uh, you know poor girl uh, who is not totally there, like doesn't speak, may have some sort of, you know, disorder of some kind. And, you know, Agatha is just like, hey, I'm getting old and wrinkly and gross. What if I just use this young, fresh body that does not seem to be being used by the person uh, piloting it uh, these days? And I'll just be young and uh, I'll just, you know, jump bodies and, and that kind of thing. And I think that stuff's really interesting. The Thaddeus Wilcox stuff is less interesting to me, but it, it there's something there. I do like his walkabout in Mexico when he's running off to try to figure out uh, how he can get in touch with these Aroden or whatever. And so that stuff is really interesting. Um, so, you know, it's okay character-wise... But I also don't think that it is the point, you know, like this is very plot driven versus character driven uh, or story driven. And I think that the characters are okay, but I wouldn't go out of my way to like if, if you ask me what kind of people they were, I could probably tell you more about Agatha and and Thaddeus than anybody else. And maybe I suppose the the clown with no makeup who is just this you know crazy person who has been instilled with this cosmic vision and is uh on on this journey this violent journey across america so that he can you know get the blessings of these cosmic beings and so you know that stuff is is kind of interesting um so yeah uh, characters overall you know not the main point of this but but okay and then we get to authenticity. Does it feel authentic? And that's where it kind of doesn't, right? Because of all the public domain stuff and movies and clips that you may have seen elsewhere before and clips that are reused because it's like, well, this is something we found in the public domain and it's the best thing that we have to illustrate these cosmic horrors. So we're just going to reuse this over and over again. And that's where it seems less authentic uh if if authenticity is really the aim of this and i'm not entirely sure that that is the aim of the unknowable regardless I, you know it, it is a, a flaw i would say that too often in the viewing of the unknowable i am thinking about the fact that i may or may not have seen the movie that the unknowable is trying to mimic or, or trying to steal from um, so that's a little bit of a bummer, but you know, it, it's not enough to sink the project, but it's definitely a thing that came up a time or two. And then that brings us to watchability. Is this series watchable? And that's where, you know, this thing kind of red lines, which is to say that it's very, the, like the episodes are very quick. Um, you know, like any good serial, it sets up 
uh, a little bit of a tease for the next episode that makes you want to finish it. And I finished the whole thing in a, a single sitting. You know, it was like sit down, watch the unknowable in in its nine episode run, and kind of enjoy this little morsel of a story that is you know filled with cosmic horrors and witchcraft and uh all kinds of uh stuff like that that made it really fun and and maybe that's the thing i like the most about the unknowable is that it felt like it was done with a sense of whimsy whimsy and fun and you know and it's still going for something that's a little creepy like once it gets into you know like sacrificing these birds with these alien parasites in it and that kind of thing. And there was a thing with time at the end of it that was really satisfying. You know, it it kind of has a watch the skies kind of ending that I thought was really good. And so that would bring us to our final criteria, which is scares is the show scary. And I don't know that it's actually scary it's at least not in the sense that most cosmic horror I don't think is frightening uh, on on the surface level, but there is something dread inducing about the story. You know, like the the story that it is telling is a true old gods kind of story, and I probably found it more entertaining. What was the uh, Rebecca McIndry? movie recently where the guy's talking to the elder God in the bathroom stall, um, with Ryan Quan. I, I can remember everything about the movie, but the title of that thing, but it, you know, it, that I, I think was less successful than the unknowable in capturing what makes cosmic war, uh, kind of frightening. And, and in fact, there's one of the characters that this, you know, killer known as the clown with no makeup, there is a point where he realizes that he's kind of been had by these, you know, creatures that lurk beyond the, the veil, uh, in this ethereal plane. And that's really, you know, sort of fun and eerie and like, yes, they, th- this guy was a horrible person and, and violent and scary in his own right, but he's nothing, you know, there's, there's no real affection or, or interest uh, by these cosmic creatures for a creature like this. He just is useful. And that, I think, gets to the root of what makes cosmic horror good when it is good, which is this notion that we are not a matter of concern for the old gods. You know, they will go about their business, and if our planet or our realm or reality or whatever is totally shattered... Uh, because of their changing whims and we all die horribly or live in a nightmare world, eh, that's really not their problem. You know, they don't really care. They're beyond such thoughts. They're beyond the concerns of mortal man, Um, but are, you know, capable of influencing the fates of mortal man in ways that are horrifying and terrible. And so that kind of thing I find really, really interesting when it comes to cosmic horror as a subgenre of horror and and that's what i think the unknowable gets right there's a, a bit of the uncanny in the unknowable if you will so do i think it's outright scary maybe not but it's something i've thought about and and i enjoyed my time with it and i'll use it as a point of comparison like for good cosmic horror um and we've seen a, a pretty good uh swath of that in later years in, in the past few years, like Color Out of Space uh, with Nick Cage was surprisingly good. And then, you know, something like The Unknowable comes along. And you're like, oh, yeah, this is still a totally viable uh, platform for this kind of, of story. So, yeah, there you have it, The Unknowable. It's available on YouTube. Um, check it out uh, from Zachary Donahue. Uh, I enjoyed it. I, I think it's interesting. It's an interesting little tidbit. Um, so I'll be back in a week. We're going to be doing a heart of horror, uh, recording that this weekend. Speaking of cosmic horror, we're going to be doing a heart of horror, uh, with, uh, with none other than Kate Pollock, uh, and the movie from beyond. So stay tuned for that. 
Um, beyond that, uh, should have some more stuff coming up pretty soon. Um, hopefully, you know, this is the, the thing I say every time, right, is I think there's probably going to be some more time on my hands coming up. But then there never is because, like, something will happen at school and then I got to go deal with that stuff. So, uh, who knows? Who knows? Only the shadow knows. Um, but I appreciate everybody sticking with me. I appreciate everyone listening. Uh, be sure if you are enjoying these little uh, digressions into found footage and know somebody who enjoys uh, found footage, then uh, send them our way. Uh, we got, you know, 20-ish something of these now. Uh, as well as plenty of other stuff here on the Dark Parade. And uh, and if you don't care for any of that stuff, uh, you know, there's also Pick 6 Movies and Duncan and Bo Come Correct, which, by God, we are going to record one uh, very soon because we've got, um, oh, God help us all, there's a new season of Slasher beginning before too long. So I'm afraid we will have to cover that at any rate. Um. Thank you so much for listening and supporting. And as always, thank you for joining the Dark Parade. We'll see you next time.